Y'all doing Stuart, I won't send you a link tonight. Okay. It's all right if you do. I know you generate them automatically, don't you? Well, yeah, it starts a recording when I do, and so. Have what? Now you are talking about dog, not Stuart, right? Yeah, Stuart doesn't move that fast. Not anymore. Not anymore. In my youth, you should have seen me, Mark. I was something to my whole. You weren't like me, were you? What's that? I was just, I was just telling you, when I was in school, one of my coaches got on you with practice. He said, come to you, the laziest person. You don't do nothing all that. I said, coach. Some people built for speed, some for endurance, but I was built for comfort. Uh, <laughs> that's a good response. I'll remember that one. All right, it is 6 o'clock. It's good to have everyone here this evening. Make sure that we have swapped over. We have. Crowd's really light tonight. We've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's quality over quantity. It's a, built for comfort. It's a, <laughs> Uh, but a lot are out. Andrew, they're not here, said they're listening. Uh, said Caden's having trouble with asthma. Shirley has a kidney stone. He said Nanny, I assume that's her, has a kidney stone. Vicki uh, is in Virginia visiting a friend. I hope she's listening uh, tonight, not for sure, but uh, said she was going to try to. Aaron's listening. Uh, she's had, I'm just reading over her text a little bit, her implant has uh, been failing a little bit. She's had a lot more pain. So they've done some adjustment on it, and uh, it's better. <laughs> I used to watch baseball faithfully, and I, don't, I didn't even know who won last night's game until Aaron sent me a uh, text that go Nats. I assume that's Nationals as opposed to she's cheering for little bugs lying around. So I, I just now knew who won. Well, that, that'll be the final game tonight, so that'll be drag my feet here a little. we got a few coming in. Uh, but that pretty well covers our, our... That pretty well covers our sick and the announcements there. Continue, of course, remember mom. 
And she hadn't made it all week. She just hadn't felt good, but a little bit better as the week progresses. This is our last night of October, last uh, service, I mean. And our last service in a daylight saving time. Just keep in mind that by Sunday we'll be to standard time, and our evening service will be at 6. I haven't, or 4 for Sunday. I hadn't changed it on the website yet, but I will take care of that definitely by the, by the time the bulletin's published, but I'll try to take care of it tomorrow for sure. And continue to remember Ruby's parents as well. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Beginning a new study tonight. Study of Isaiah. 66 chapters. Very long book. It'll take us over a year to complete this book. Well, I opened to 243. It's a good uplifting song. Mom has commented she enjoys this one. I know a lot of people here do. So let's sing it. Number 243. <clears throat> Some glad morning when this life is o'er I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore I'll fly away prayer this evening. <clears throat> Let's, uh, I'll change my mind on this. Let's sing number 102. I'm sure Jerry's listening. I know this is one of his favorites. He's with mom this evening. Stuart, you seem like you're back to the land of the living. Do you feel like saying a prayer tonight? And so after this song, we'll ask Stuart to lead us in prayer. <coughs> number 102. There is Lord Jesus, ruler of all nature, O Thou of God and man the Son. Thee. Mm -hmm. 
Songbook, just a moment. <clears throat> Number five hundred twelve. Number five hundred twelve. Faith of our fathers living still In spite of dungeon fire and sword Oh, how our hearts beat high with joy There we hear that glorious word Children's faith, if they like. 
him could I for thee pay the Lord Father's holy faith we will be true to thee till death pay the Others we will love, both friend and foe, in all our strife, and preach thee to as knows how, by kindly Sing one more before we have our classes this evening. <clears throat> Number 216. Number 216. Here we are, but straying pilgrims, here our path is open deep. But to cheer us on our journey, still we sing this way, son, here. Yonder over the rolling river, where the shining mansions rise, soon we'll be our home forever, and the smile of the blessed giver plans all our Are often weary off the hills that throng our way. Here the tempest darkly gathers, but our hearts within us say, Yonder over the rolling river, where the shiny mansions rise, soon will be our home forever. And the smile of the blessed giver climbs all our souls are often fearful of the pilgrims lurking foe, but the Lord is our defender, and he tells us we may know, yonder over the rolling river, where the shining mansions rise, soon will be our home forever, and the smile of the blessed giver glad. All right, this looks like it. Allie Rose is a little beyond that class. In color. You see me? Did you get my text? I sent you a text there. I filled out ones behind you. One filled out is behind you. There's a lesson behind you. Vicky, that one forward right here. Thank you. And so I just read you that in like the last class a week before she had to get a lesson. Not that yours wasn't good enough, but Vicky had left that for her because she wouldn't be here or whoever needed it. Do you have two? Yes, well, good. I'm glad you might always want to do that. I'll keep that in mind because Ruby sometimes can't be here.
Can you? It is. That's why I did have to go to, I had to move the mic off of this stand because when we went to this, it was just ripping out mom's ears because every time I would open the keyboard, the rolling of the wheels, it just <laughs> sounded like wagon train running over or no. But I'm glad you told me that, Stuart. It is very sensitive. And uh, so I hadn't heard that exactly. So Ruby asked me about the calendar alerts going to everybody. If it's on the church calendar, it should pop up for everybody. I don't know. I have. Does anyone else get church calendar alerts or anything pop up? It's on the calendar. Well, I know if you're. It's only on iPhone, or your or your Mac. You talk about whenever you add on like Wednesday nights, Wednesday and Sunday, mm -hmm. the yeah. scripture. I had reminders just to pop up like an hour ahead of time, and I thought, well, that would be probably a nuisance to people, so I took those off. I was just going to tell you, I got a reminder, but it had, and it has a link in it, but the link to the lesson goes to the previous ah. lesson. Ah, okay, I need to, so need I to make sure I'd update that each updated. week. Yes, it does. It has Second Chronicles 36. I, that's something sort of new I'm doing, not quite used to doing it yet, so. It's just me, it wouldn't matter, but everybody else. Yeah, everybody at least can see it, whether they get a reminder or not, and some do get a reminder, so I'm glad you told me. <laughs> So, but it should, so when Stuart's out on the road, he can hear every mouse click. That's pretty sensitive, because you listen to this mouse, it's, it's I not that. I can't hear it here. You hear it better in Colorado. All right, let's go to a new class tonight, Book of Isaiah. Excited to begin this study. 66 chapters, which would be 66 weeks, and, uh, Chances are we'll miss a few Wednesday nights, possibly one or two in the winter because of ice or snow. We'll see. Hopefully not. But even at that, it's a year plus another 14 weeks, which is three months. So we're looking really at the end of 2020, going into 2021. That's a long study. It's a long book. Isaiah is called the Little Bible. You probably heard me mention this the other day by commentators and people. Why is that? Right, it has 66 chapters and the Bible has 66 books. And so much of Isaiah is about prophecies of Jesus. So it's really like the core of the Bible subject of Jesus. And he is one of the major prophets. Uh, I think we've got, want to see, yeah, we got on both. Not everybody can see this one. Everybody can see this one. Though. Actually, I don't know, either one's about the same. For any listening online, I stepped away just a moment. Uh, you have five major prophets. I'm speaking a little loud so people can hear me online. Five major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. And the Bible, it's always easy to remember the dividing out. There's either five or twelve books in each section. It's five, twelve, five, five, twelve. I've always just heard that. Five of history, five of uh, five of law, five, twelve of history, five poetry, five major prophets, twelve minor prophets, five gospels, twelve letters, and uh, they don't have this one. Five, twelve, five, five, twelve. That's the old Old Testament. They've got this one. A little different here. That's 12. Yeah, that one has it the way I know mostly here. Is they have, in the New Testament, they have five Gospels. One, history, then the letters from Paul, and then the general letters in Revelation. But in the Old Testament, it's 5, 12, 5, 5, 12. And the reason Isaiah is called, and Jeremiah is called, a major prophet is not for any subject matter, but what reason? How big they are. Adam? I was about to say, um, with, uh, so that one includes the revelation with the letters? Yes. I was about to say, I mean, that would kind of fit too, because especially in the first two or three chapters, it's very much structured like that too. Right. 
they included the general epistles, and over here it's included the prophecy, but it's just how they... So there's 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 in the New for a total of 66. That's why that one's with the younger kids. And yeah, they wouldn't understand prophecy, them. really. Right. So let's go ahead. Uh, I'm going to look up here about Isaiah. It means Jehovah has saved the major prophet, son of Amos, who prophesied concerning Judah and Jerusalem during the days of King Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. We see that. Author of the prophetic book by his name. <laughs> I don't know why they put things like this or tradition. I don't even want to read those of what happened to him. I will say this. I'll go ahead and read it, but tradition has it that Isaiah was sawn asunder in the trunk of a carob tree by King Manasseh. And it is referred to in Hebrews 11 that some of the, you know, people of old were sawn asunder. So, but don't know whether Isaiah was or not. But let's go ahead and begin. What is it, 20 what verses? It's reading it this afternoon. No, it's more than 31. Went on into chapter 2 a little bit. I'm going to look ahead real quick now. We'll definitely have some prophecies concerning the church come in the past in the last days. The house of the Lord be established. All nations shall flow unto it. That's the church for sure. But let's read, begin in Isaiah, make some comments. I appreciate Adam pointing that out. That is grouped, Revelation is, with the general epistles on that chart, but some have it prophecy, and the first part is more of a general epistle. All right, Isaiah 1, 1. The vision of Isaiah. I didn't do the questions, did I? Excuse me, I was so excited about Isaiah. Uh, Ruby didn't have to say anything. After 32, 33, yay, going on 34, that's the way Amos would have worded it. For three transgressions, yay, even four. Uh, I could just tell the way she looked at me. I have forgot something. She didn't have to look very much. I knew what it was. I forgot to go over the... I was so excited about Isaiah. So let's go over the questions. Number one, not here. Number two, Ruby, number one, rather. Is verse one. <clears throat> the vision of Isaiah, the son of Amoz, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Isaiah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Ruby is pretty witty. She finished reading the bulletin, came in the office. <laughs> I said, you done? She said, no, do you have any more red ink? <laughs> and that's what she said. But she was kidding. But nothing tops the day she came out of her office with two red pens, pulled them out like pistols. <laughs> she was ready to prove. And so, but more like swords in a, what's that thing they go? Scabbard. I started saying scarab, but that's a beetle, isn't it? That's, I guess. Scabbard. All right, number two. A lot won't be here tonight. Kathy. Verse three. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's field. But Israel, Israel does not know my people, and does not consider. All right, number three. Larry. <coughs> Verse eight. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage. Okay, number four, Allie Rose. That's wrong, Stuart. We'll wait till the right one. Taylor. I know it's funky, but this one uh, has scribbled out. I think it's 16. It is. Uh, Wash you, make you clean. Put away your evil and your doings, and then before mine eyes, cease to do evil. Okay, number six. It's me, it's verse 18. Come now, 
and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Ruby, that's the song we need to sing for the invitation, if you can find it. You know the song I'm talking about. I don't have a... Is that a Fanny Crosby song? Yeah. I'm not for sure. Yeah, we'll sing that for invitation. There's one that actually just quotes that verse. Number seven, Stuart with a W. Number eight, Mike. Twenty-seven. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment, and her co co converts with righteousness. Okay, number nine, Adam. Verse twenty-nine. For they shall be ashamed of the oaks which ye have desired, and ye shall be confounded for the garments that ye have chosen. And number ten, Sandy. Verse thirty. Do you find it, Ruby? Though your sins be as scarlet, probably is the title. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to look it up on the internet so we'll know the exact title. It's in the blue book. Oh, she found it immediately. Though your sins be as scarlet. We'll definitely sing that for the invitation because that this song's taken right from that verse. Okay, let's go over this chapter. This chapter really establishes the sins of Israel and how they have left. Even animals were doing better than they as far as following their master. So let's read these 31 verses. The vision of Isaiah the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. So he was a prophet spread out over four kings. Of course, Hezekiah is the one that, you know, had 15 more years and the shadow of the sundial turned backwards. So this is during that time. Hear, O heavens, and give ear. It's interesting that he starts out addressing the nature, if you will, just the heavens and the earth about us. And probably it's a worded this way, and the Lord started out this way to speak to the heavens and to the earth because of what might you think? Well, the people weren't doing what? They weren't, they weren't listening. So he spoke to someone that was. Heavens and the earth. And Ruby said they weren't listening. They weren't. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nursed and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. So he just starts out talking to a third party, heavens and earth. It's the Lord speaking. I brought up children, and they have rebelled. And then he talks about animals. He doesn't even address the people yet. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. You know, heaven and earth obey. The laws of nature, sunsets, that's why we can have apps on the phone that tell exactly the time the sun will come up or any star you want to know because they obey the voice of the Lord. They, they simply do. I mean, they, there's no choice. They follow the Lord's decree and the earth does. And the animals know their owners. They know where they live. They know Master's crib. They know who feeds them. Ruby and I, I've mentioned this before, we're down, and before you ask, we don't want any more. We're down to only four cats from 14. They, a couple have run over, unfortunately. Two passed away just last week. The, uh, the, the, the big one of them all, the, the King Leo, he was above them all. He was definitely the alpha. And uh, I don't know, he got sick. I really, just a side, I think... Soybeans had been sprayed. And I think some of them got in the soybeans and licked and got poisoned because they started having fur fall off and some lesions. But it's neither here nor there. But I mean, I, I theorize that's what happened. 
and maybe getting disease, raccoons come up and everything. But he was, he's always gone, but he comes in for food. He knows where food is. But I knew something wasn't right because he came home and stayed home for about 48 hours. And then he got in the dog house, well, cat house, I guess, that has the straw from Sharon and Stuart in it. And uh, that he went in there and he, he's, he's very, he won't let us even touch him hardly. And uh, he's just, and you can, cats have different personality, but I told her, I looked in the house, he was just laying there unconscious like, and I told her, I said, he's gone, we need to take him down to the woods. So I took the top of the house off, it snaps off. I reached in to get him, to take him, lay him to rest. He looked around like, what are you doing? I'm not ready for the grave yet. I said, excuse me, I put the top back down. And so I told Ruby, I said, he's not going to be here long. Went out the next morning, he was gone. She said, are you sure? I said, he is. His eyes were open and glazed over. But Ruby commented that he came home to pass on. He knew his home. He'd been born there, always lived there. He'd go to the barn. I mean, I doubt his territory is any further than the barn. But animals know. I just got a text from Vicki that she's listening in, in Virginia. Hillsville, I think, Virginia is where she's at. Uh, is the name of the town. But glad she's listening in tonight. We have quite a few listening. But animals know. You know from pets like cats. And just side note, the, just two days later, we had one pass on. And so they were definitely gotten into something. But it has stopped now. So fortunately for now. Animals know their owner. Ox knoweth his owner. The ass is master's crib. Animals know where home is. Pets know you. Stock knows you. But Israel does not know. My people does not consider. They were doing worse than animals. Isaiah 1.4. Ah, sinful nation. Now he addresses the people. He addressed the heavens and earth because they were listening, but the nation was not the people. Ah, sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity. That's an interesting word that the Lord chose to use there. Laden represents a burden, something you're carrying. He's just mentioned an ox and an ass which carries burdens. They're very strong. They carry things, pull things. A sinful nation. Yes, they were laden like the animals, but they were laden with iniquity. A seed of evildoers. They weren't just the evildoers, but they, evil was coming out of them. Children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel to anger. They are gone away backward. Pretty clear what he's saying. Are there any questions or comments? Why should, verse 5, why should he be stricken anymore? They were being stricken because of their sins, and he said, why, why should you be stricken anymore? He will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart faint. They were getting worse and worse. They were getting sicker spiritually. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it. But wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. He paints a picture that they were very injured and sick people. They had wounds from their feet up to their head, spiritual wounds. Wounds, bruises, and putrefying sores. This word, if anyone asks what putrefying is, it doesn't sound good just in the context. It means fresh and new, just open sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified or soothed with ointment. They hadn't put anything on their sores. You know, whenever we have an injury or burn, we try to fix it some way with something as soon as we can. We don't want to leave it open. There might be infection or other things that set in. And if we leave spiritual sores open, it's going to lead to death. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devoured in your presence, and it is desolate, is overthrown by strangers. So the things they had from the Lord, the land that they had, the cities, they were burned, they were devoured, and this was because of their sins. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. What do you think he's talking about there? Right, the daughter of Zion it would be Jerusalem. 
And no doubt, Zion's, Jerusalem is called Zion, probably the daughter of Zion, is, the, the, is no doubt referring to the city. Just a metaphor like it's, it's a, just a young girl left alone. It's left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in the garden of cucumbers. If you leave a house in a vineyard, in a garden, it says of cucumbers here, uh, that's, try not to think of cucumbers the way that we do necessarily. Mixqua is the, uh, mixha is the Hebrew word for it. It's the only time that word's used in the Bible. This translation, the children's translation says melons. Melons. What, well, they, melons, cucumbers, they grow on what? And if a cottage is left amongst them, what's going to happen among vines? It'll be just taken over. And that's what was happening to the city. It's what was happening to the people. Sin was overgrowing them like vines just coming up as a besieged city. They were being left untended. And it would just be grown up. So he says this was like a booth that you had a gardener to sit in. So that's a, a good point to make that Stuart's making there. And it does say it's left as a booth in a vineyard. That you just leave and it'll grow up. And you see that with any kind of building. A, a shed you have outside, if you don't go into it for years, it's just going to grow up. It's what... Well, it was happening. They were growing up. Sin was overtaking them because they weren't taking care of themselves spiritually. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Because there was a core of people that were faithful, the Lord spared them. If it hadn't been for them, he said, we'd be like Sodom and Gomorrah, and what happened to them? Well, they were destroyed by fire from heaven. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the Lord of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. He actually calls them Sodom and Gomorrah now. And no doubt in a spiritual sense because of their sins. Listen to the word, ye rulers of Sodom. Sodom had already been destroyed. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. He's referring to them like that. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? They were offering sacrifices and going through the motions... He says, what good is it doing you? You know, if we come to worship regularly and give and everything, but live a sinful life out in the world and do anything we want, what good is the spiritual things we do? That's what he's asking. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifice unto me, said the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight, I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. I, I've got all these things. I've had enough of them. He wants their hearts, what he wants. When you have come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? It says, when you come to appear before me, who has required this from you to trample my courts? So the things that they were doing was just in vain worship. And, and uh, he says, you're just trampling my courts. Who has asked you to do the way you're doing? It was a big thing, especially in the Middle Ages. It was called indulgences. You could pay ahead of time to sin. If you wanted to commit adultery, you could pay enough to the, quote, church, and you'd be forgiven ahead of time. Adam? I was about to say, you could also, I think, be forgiven of any sin if you participated in a crusade or something like that. I haven't heard that, I but think I heard it makes sense. You, if you were involved in a crusade, you could be forgiven of any sin you have been committed in life. Adam was saying, for those listening on life, you were involved in a crusade, like in the Middle Ages, you could be forgiven of any sin. Of course, that's uh, obviously not the case. So it does make a good point. They, they would come and do, go through these things and sin and feel like they were being righteous. Verse 13, he actually tells them, bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination to me, the new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies. I cannot away with it. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. The things they were going through to serve the Lord, he said, I, I just can't put up with it anymore. These but, almost sound like pagan rituals. 
it does sound like they were going through things about the moons and the various things. They did do a lot of pagan rituals. And we already learned during some of these kings and Manasseh, they offered their children to fire. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. This seems, as Ruby said, pagan rituals. It seems to this, they had created their own religious holidays. It does seem to indicate. I think Amos, is it, maybe addresses that. Go ahead. Because it does mention it being part of that other worship service they were doing. So it does seem like new religious holidays. Yeah, I do think they were adding uh, new religious holidays. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. Would these have come in from surrounding people who worship false gods? Probably so. People brought them in, they're intermarrying of other people. And uh, I was listening today to numbers of Cosby and Zimri who had the javelin run through them and their adultery. And, and what really, I made a note of that passage because they were from prominent families, but people would bring in false religions. Well, we've only got a couple of minutes and we're only halfway through the chapter, so let me push on a little. And when you spread forth your hands, so apparently they were like spreading out their hands in some kind of worship and prayer and when you spread forth your hands i will hide mine eyes from you he said i'm not able to look yea when you make many prayers i will not hear your hands are full of blood so they were doing everything but worshiping god in a way that he didn't even want he didn't even want to hear it what here's what they need to do wash you make you clean put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes cease to do evil stop sinning learn to do well seek judgment Relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together. He says, let's talk about this, saith the Lord. And here's a song we'll sing in a moment. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Of course, scarlet and crimson are both very red like blood than the white snow and wool. And Jesus, it's interesting that his hair in Revelation 1 is referred to as snow and wool, being so white. If ye be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. I could go into a lot of detail on each of these verses, but we'll press on. It is a quarter tale. How is the faithful city becoming harlot? It was full of judgment. Righteousness lodged in it, but now murders. He prepares them from going to a faithful wife to a harlot. Thy silver has become dross, which is the waste off of silver. Thy wine mixed with water. They, their spirituality certainly was watered down. Thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loveth gifts. He's talking about bribes here. And followeth after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord... The Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. He said he's going to take care of this. It's interesting. There's words that really have no meaning but make sounds in Isaiah. He says, ah, I will ease. And I think of Isaiah 55. And you probably don't. I don't expect anyone to. Does anyone know what the first word in Isaiah 55 is? Ruby might because she was listening. She said, is that right? Ho, ho, everyone that thirsteth, let him come. Let him, you know, do the waters. Because it just does start out with just an exclamation of ho, getting their attention. And I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy tin. So he said, I'm going to turn you back, you know. Obviously, if they will turn to the Lord, he's, gonna, he's going to help them. And I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment, and her converts with righteousness. And the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together. And they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. So he's given them an opportunity to turn back. But he said the sinners and transgressors will be destroyed. Three more verses. 
For they shall be ashamed of the oaks which they have desired, and ye shall be confounded for the gardens that ye have chosen. They were worshiping the Lord in these places of trees and groves and gardens. That was a big thing that they had done. It's interesting, he uses a word in New King James, I don't even know, terebinth trees. For ye shall be as an oak whose leaf fadeth as a garden that had no water. They were drying up spiritually. You're going to be like a, a leaf, I mean, dry, oak drying up, and a garden that doesn't have water. In the last verse tonight, and the strong shall be as tow, that's something that burns very quickly, and the maker of it as a spark, and they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them. So they are going to be destroyed, and no doubt some hints of eternal destruction here. It's not a lot in the Old Testament about hell, but there's definitely enough hints of punishment. Are there any comments? I rushed a little bit at the end because I spent a little bit more at the beginning there. All right, next week's 22 verses. Let me pass the lessons around. You'll see definitely some prophecies of the church coming. Let me pass these lessons and we'll have the invitation song. All right, Ruby, what was the number of the song in the red book or blue, either one? 583. All right, turn to 583 in the red book. This song is obviously written right from this chapter of Isaiah. We'll look at the verse again. Sort of a song I'm not super probably familiar with singing, but I can certainly, I can hear it in my mind, it's beautiful <laughs> there, <laughs> but coming out of my mouth isn't as much. And so, Isaiah 118, he says, come now, let us reason together. Let's talk about this, the Lord is saying. Let's reason about this, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Both opposites, you know, red versus white. And of course, as I mentioned, Revelation 1, Jesus' hair is mentioned as being white as snow and white as wool. Both are mentioned in that chapter regarding his hair. And so it is Jesus that can take our blood-stained sins, our, our lives, blood-stained lives stained by sin and made them scarlet and crimson. We can make it white as snow by, ironically, the blood of Jesus. Jesus' blood is so pure that it doesn't make red, it makes white. Just a side note, don't want to add too much here, but now in these days and times, scientists do know blood just has two kinds of cells, really, what? Red and white. That, that's interesting, isn't it? Just, one, the sins are like scarlet and crimson, but Jesus will make them white as snow. Not that it has anything to do with anything, per se. I just thought that was interesting. Even blood has white in it. And Jesus' blood makes us white as snow. Mankind of the first century, outside of Jesus, would have had no clue of that. And so it's interesting the things we can still learn that are biblical. I thought Stuart said a good word in his prayer, good thought. He said something about us learning nuggets in the lesson. It is like nuggets. So, you know, you're not going to necessarily find a big boulder of gold. You might find a nugget of something. And that's where our lessons are a lot of times. Maybe you can just get one or two nuggets. Sunday, I really gave myself a good nugget, and I hope you too did too, from Revelation 14, where we saw that the word sickle, interestingly enough, is used seven times in that chapter where Jesus is putting the sickle into the earth, the completeness of his final reaping of the harvest. And a good nugget tonight, the white versus the snow, uh, or the blood and white as snow and wool. But if you're here tonight and need the blood of Christ, Certainly you had to believe on him, repent of your sins, confess his name. Baptism washes away your sins in the blood of Christ. And then you remain faithful and repent and pray for forgiveness as you do sin. So let's sing the first verse of 583 as we stand. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. 
though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Though your sin be as scarlet, though your sin be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. They shall be as white as snow. We have time to sing the second and third part. If y'all mind, I just humor me, please. All right. Stuart has asked us, I done sung the book, shut down everything, computers oh, off. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We'll turn the lights off and go yeah, off. I was done out to the truck. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just kidding. Stuart wants to sing the second and third verses. It's a tough song a little bit for me, but y'all do a really good job. We'll make this our closing song. It's a beautiful song written by Fanny J. Crosby. She was a really prolific writer of gospel songs. She was blind. And... Uh, I'll, uh, matter of fact, I'll look her up right now. Uh, you'll see a picture of her probably sitting in a chair in a white dress. Maybe because of black and white photos only. That's the picture I know most of her. What song do you think would be printed on her headstone? Uh, it wasn't a white dress. But she definitely had on colored glass. But that's her. She wrote so many gospel songs. There's her grave in loving memory, in grateful and loving memory. Blessed assurance. She wrote over 3,000 hymns and poems. She wasn't very old. You know, people look different today. She looks, quote, old. She died at 35. Her heart can see. She was blind, but the Lord gave her the ability to write. She certainly looks older than 35 there, doesn't she? Born in New York, 1820, died in 1855. Blessed Assurance, she wrote. That was probably her most well-known song. We wrote over 3,000. All right. I just wanted to share that, and I hope some were watching on YouTube. If you didn't see it, just Google Fanny J. Crosby and look up images of her. It has a lot of pictures of her and her headstone. After we sang the second and third verses, and Stuart, I don't mind at all. I'm glad to do it. Uh, I'll lead us in closing prayer. Don't forget our service is Sunday morning, Lord's Day at 9 o'clock, and then Sunday evening at 4 p.m. Second and third verse of 583, thou dismiss. Hear the voice that entreats you, O return to God. Hear the voice that entreat you, O return ye unto God. He is of great compassion and of wondrous love. Hear the voice that entreat Before I sang the third verse, I didn't realize, you know, she wasn't finished with that one verse in the chapter, was she? The rest of the song still from Isaiah 1, much so, and I did not realize that. So we've learned much tonight. Third verse, and I'll dismiss it. <laughs> he will give your transgressions and remember them no more. He Look unto 
Father, as we come to thee in prayer, we're thankful for the spirit of worship that we've had this evening. And we're thankful that though when we sin, we know it's like crimson and scarlet, it's red and stained, that the blood of your Son will make it white as snow and wool. Forgive us of our sins, be it those of our sick, be it those of our number who need prayers. We pray Mom will get stronger and Alice, uh, be it Mark Quigley with his eyes, uh, be it Sam, uh, Shirley as she's a... Uh, uh, having some health issues, and Caden, that his asthma will be okay, and uh, get uh, better and recover from that. Be with Vicki as she's traveling, give her a safe trip home. Give us all safety. Continue to bless Ruby's parents. Bring us together on the Lord's Day and finally save us all in heaven. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.